Mikola Bidniak, artist and survivor. A handicapped artist whose works are well known throughout North America. He realizes every day that life does not just simply go on, sometimes you have to make it go on. As a youngster, in his early teens, his future was turned upside down through a horrible accident. While he was visiting in post-war Europe, he helped on his uncle's farm and touched a landmine. His hands were ripped off, one eye lost, but still he was glad to be alive. After he came from the hospital, he wanted to write his parents, and as he was doodling with a pencil in his mouth, some images started to form, which led to his early sketching and drawing. But it was a long, long road, trying to overcome the handicap, fighting despair. Looking back over 40 years in his struggle to be independent, not to be overly reliant on other people, can be frustrating. Mikola is fortunate to have his wife, who knows his limitations and helps without being intrusive, which allows him to retain his dignity. We all face new challenges every day, but for him it means extra efforts to overcome them. And there are times when efforts alone are not enough. Through ingenuity and determination, Mikola was able to make use of an automobile which allows him the freedom of mobility to pursue his life as a professional artist. As a creative person, you cannot be isolated from the world, and so his van takes him across the country to sketch and photograph, so that he can continue painting during the winter months. With six years of studying at art colleges, receiving diplomas and graduating with scholarships, Mikola is an all-around artist. His striking landscapes and still lifes have won international acclaim. Because the East European tradition is part of his heritage, icons and religious murals have played a great part in his exploration of artistic skills. Some of his original works now enhance several churches in the United States and Canada. Fortunately, a frame covering the largest wall in his studio allowed him to create these immense canvases in one piece. Painted with the brush in his mouth, he recalls banging his head constantly on the studio ceiling to paint the upper portions of these murals. But these pains were quickly overcome by a determination to succeed. And for that, life must go on. is a will, there is a way. Myron Angus of St. Thomas, along Lake Erie, was born handicapped, unable to use his hands or feet. As a boy in St. Mary's, he attended regular school on the advice of a man who had lost his own arms. Just put a pencil in your mouth, and they will teach you, is what he told young Myron. Through constant efforts to improve self-sufficiency and mobility, today he manages quite well. As an established mouth painting artist, Myron spends a great amount of time visiting severely handicapped people in veterans hospitals and rehabilitation centers to pass on his experience and encouragement. Penny Oman lives in a home for the physically disabled in Edmonton, Alberta. She's completely paralyzed from the neck down. It was in 1970, when Penny was 14 years old, that a car she was riding in was hit head-on by a drunken driver. In spite of this handicap imposed on her in the prime of her youth, Penny has not only adjusted courageously, but is looking positively into the future. An early interest in art gave her a new outlook on life, and as a student member of the Association of Mouth and Foot Painting Artists, she has the opportunity to experiment with techniques to make a career out of an ambition. Like Penny Oman, Cody Tresiera from Ashcroft, British Columbia, was severely injured in an auto accident at the age of 19. It left him a quadriplegic, dependent on a respirator. As part of a new means of communication, Cody is learning the technique of using mouth-activated Morse code, to operate a computer, 
but his first love, as an outlet for his creative ability, is his painting. While he was at the Pearson Hospital in Vancouver, he was introduced to mouth painting as part of a rehabilitation to strengthen his neck muscles and to serve as a form of recreation. Several years later now, his talent and persistence have opened the doors to a brighter tomorrow. Windsor, Ontario. A group of art students are being taught by Larry Parker, a Canadian mouth painter, who was born handicapped and whose personal struggle has been greater than any of his students will ever face. As a quadriplegic, he learned the importance of self-discipline early in life. He took correspondence courses from kindergarten to grade eight, and his dream finally came true when he graduated from the University of Windsor with a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree and a major in English literature. Larry Parker never looked back, and his experience has taught him that life must go on. Manfred Kijek of Edmonton, Alberta, has been hospitalized since age 22. He had contracted respiratory polio, which left him paralyzed. Not being able to continue with his promising future as an optician, he was inspired by other handicapped artists to start a new career. It was a difficult beginning. Periods of depression, fully dependent on the help of others. Some of this mood is reflected in his early paintings, but then he realized that life has to go on. Today he is proud to see that his work finds recognition throughout North America and Europe. Peterborough, Ontario. For the past seven years, the Peterborough Civic Hospital has been home for Barbara Kinsman. As a victim of multiple sclerosis, which struck her at age 34, Barbara is a quadriplegic who needs constant care. To help her overcome early depressions, she found encouragement and assistance from the hospital staff to develop her mouth painting talent as a form of occupational therapy. Frequent visits from her husband and children give her the greatest support and inspiration. Her lively disposition and positive outlook on life reflect significantly in her development as a mouth painting artist. Danella Flamme was born in 1958 in Saint-Damien, a village in the county of Bellechasse, Quebec. Unfortunate complications at birth affected his motor nerves, particularly in his upper limbs. While attending the rehabilitation center of Francois Charon in Quebec, the counselors encouraged him to explore writing and painting with his feet. At the present time, he is in his eighth term at Sister Huguette Garon's studio to study oil painting and the art of perspective. As a model of courage and source of inspiration to others, Daniel lives for his artwork, and as a hobby, he loves to watch sports and likes to listen to music. But his favorite pastime is playing chess. Looking forward to new challenges, he has found a friendly rival in fellow artist Michel Guimet, who, like him, is physically handicapped. Michel had a diving accident in 1966 when he was 19 years old. He broke his neck, which left him paralyzed. Aside from some outside help assisting him in the morning and at night, he strives for independence to get along on his own. His prime time is directed towards his painting, which he taught himself while he was in the sanatorium. And what used to be part of his rehabilitation has given him a new meaning of life and an understanding that life must go on. Barbara Kinsman and Elizabeth Ann Stegberry both have multiple sclerosis. Diagnosed with the disease in 1981 and after losing all use of her arms in 1986, Elizabeth Ann felt her life's horizons had shrunk. But a book by Joni Erickson inspired her to take up painting. Using her mouth to hold the brush, she taught herself and has quickly progressed. Elizabeth likes to paint flowers because she says they represent the wonders of nature, new hope, and happiness. Barbara Kinsman became a permanent resident of Peterborough Civic Hospital after being suddenly stricken with MS in 1980. To help her overcome her early depression, some of the nurses gave her a pencil to use with her mouth. 
From that moment on, Barbara's newly discovered talent turned her into a prolific painter. For both artists, painting has helped them to rediscover life. It's my lifeline. Rehan there it is. I mean, uh, until they came into my life, really, I, it was nothing. I just sat in the hospital looking for something to do. The Rehan Dart came along and it just changed. I had something to work for. Both artists belong to Rehand Art, the association of mouth and foot painting artists. Through the sale of cards, calendars, and wrapping paper with their artwork on it, members are able to earn a living and maintain some of their independence. You can see the work.